you, you know, um, we've uh, always said we're going to be agile in respect to acquisitions if targets are out there that fit exactly into the strategy of Stucker Schneider Electric. And as the, uh, as the biggest provider of infrastructure for data centers, uh, we, uh, we thought with the you know, evolution of Gen AI and large language model, more high density data centers are required and you need to, you know, as uh, our mantra is, go from grid to the chip and then uh, from chip to the chiller. Um, as there's more cooling right to the chip, uh, we thought it would be um, a good idea to, um, uh, to you know, strengthen our portfolio in liquid cooling and uh, Motive Air Corporation out of uh, Buffalo, New York is a great company that fits great to Schneider. Peter, um, you are aware far more than I am and I will ever be of how difficult it is buying these at the right price for shareholders as well. Uh, I see the consideration is $850 million all cash uh, for the initial 75% controlling interest. Now, that's not huge compared to some of the other deals that have been talked about. But, but given the fact that everything from, I don't know, OpenAI to NVIDIA seems to be priced at extraordinary eye-watering levels, does that price represent good value for Schneider? Well, you know, uh, it's a, it's a mid-single-digit revenue multiple on the 25 um, uh, forecasted uh, revenue. And uh, in the 850 that you just quoted, there is also a tech step up that's in there. So from uh, that perspective, we uh, this company has, has grown um, more than 30% CAGR in, uh, in the last years. And um, we, we anticipate the high density market uh, for, uh, for data centers to double in the next five years or six years, at least that's what IDC um, data center forecast says. So from that perspective, we're looking at a, uh, you know, a, a good company that has solid revenue with a prosperous future and some, some good backlog. Uh, we, um, uh, we feel it's, um, uh, it, it's rich, but not overly expensive. Yeah, Peter, I'm very interested in the technology actually itself here. And I, and I don't know if you could perhaps help me with this one. Just liquid cooling is still, as, as much as it is efficient, it is still fairly expensive, can be troublesome in terms of setup as well as, or installing as well. Are, are, are customers looking at any of that as a deterrent at all with, with, with any of this? Is that, is that still not going to be a determining factor when it comes to demand? So, you know, if you, if you look at, um, at data centers, usually uh, if you have a cloud data center or normal uh, a CPU driven data center, you, you, your rec density requires uh, 30, 40 kilowatt of, um, of power and generates the respective heat. All of this can be done uh, with, um, uh, with air cooling. Now, if you move to more high density and replace the CPUs by GPUs, you will have a, a rec density of 100 kilowatt. Uh, and north of 50 kilowatt, you need to have liquid cooling. There are two methods available. One is immersion cooling, and the other one is uh, if you uh, use a, what is called a cold plate technology. So you put a, a cold plate on, um, on the chip and uh, inject uh, water at a certain temperature precisely to the location where, where the chip um, it generates heat. And then uh, you, you take the heat out and cool this coolant down again. Uh, this is quite um, uh, quite normal. Now, if you look at reference architectures that we've done together with NVIDIA that is published, the, um, um, it uses uh, that technology. And we, we do have in Schneider some of the products and it's going to be wildly enriched with uh, Motive Air. So um, it, uh, it's going to be a, a great to drive high density data centers forward and positions us right at the core uh, from the grid to the chip and then from the chip to the chiller with the coolant.